In this section, we will briefly recall the principles of coordinate systems and coordinate system transformations. To integrate data from various mapping systems, we need to have the data georeference to a common coordinate system. And the these coordinate systems need to reference the data to a location on Earth's surface. The big problem is that there are many coordinate systems and they evolved over time as accuracy of the Earth measurement has improved. So the problem that seems to be relatively simple can become really, really messy. So what kind of coordinate systems we have? The most uh, fundamental coordinate system that is used globally is geographic coordinate system that references the features on the Earth using latitude and longitude. And you should have learned uh, the principles of geographic coordinate system in high school. So please, if you don't know it or if you need uh, to refresh your memory, uh, please do. And I will give you some references about where to find more information. In principles, the data are projected from the irregular uh, geoid shape to ellipsoid and expressed as latitude and longitude and the units are degree, minutes, and seconds. So the units are angles. That means that when we are measuring distances or areas, we need to convert, we need to transform from the surface of the ellipsoid to, um, to flat plane. So using uh, geographic coordinate systems is global. It's great for data exchange. But for certain applications, especially at local scale, it may be in, in practical and uh, uh, more time consuming than using Cartesian coordinate systems uh, uh, in metric uh, units. So that's why we have projected georeference systems. In these systems, the, the data are projected from geoid to ellipsoid, that's the same as for the geographic uh, coordinate system, but then from ellipsoid to developable surface, and that can be cone, cylinder, or a plane. And then the, this developable surface is developed and you end up with planar map with coordinate system where you have X, Y, Z coordinates that are relatively easy to work with. But you can see that when you are transforming the data from the ellipsoid to the plane or to this developable surface, there will be distortions. And based on the type of these distortions, we have different kinds of uh, projected reference systems. So for example, those uh, systems that preserve shape are called conformal. Those that preserve distances are called equidistant and, though equidistant, and those that preserve areas are called equal area. And you, um, the most common are conformal and equal area, and you will probably work uh, with any of these when working on your, on your project. Now, we can't go into details for cartographic projections. That's why I would highly recommend that you read this wonderful material that is available on the internet that has lots of illustrations and in an excellent way uh, describes cartographic projections and also the, the coordinate systems. So please go through this so that you, you have a good understanding of coordinate systems because we have found that although in our assignments you don't need uh, you don't need it because everything is already prepared in a single coordinate system for for the project almost everybody needed it so and we don't only have to deal with projections we also need to deal with national and state systems that uh, include not only the projection itself, the way how, how we project the data from the geoid to ellipsoid to, to the plane, but also uh, they differ 
in which geoid is used and which datum is used. And when, when you deal with three-dimensional data, you also need to take into account vertical datum. So for example, in the United States, the older maps are uh, using Clark, um, Clark ellipsoid and NAD uh, datum. These maps are already disappearing, so try to avoid them. Most of the maps, most of the uh, data are in newer, uh, systems that is based on GRS ellipsoid and NAD datum or in world geo geodetic system and these are they, these two are very close uh, very close <clears throat> so you can use both then in terms of uh, elevations you can uh, work with uh, older vertical datum and newer vertical datum. The, they, there is about 30 centimeter difference on the North Carolina coast. So when you are, for example, studying sea level rise or coastal erosion, you need to be very careful what vertical datum was used. And then for these coordinate systems, different projections are used. For the state data, uh, we usually see Lambert conformal conic projection. And again, that uh, um, web material that I gave you will explain you in detail what this means. Uh, then for the globally, universal tran transverse Mercator is probably the most common system. And then some of the maps, such as USGS national map, use Albers equal area. Now we need to talk uh, and, uh, um, <clears throat> and discuss uh, special projection and coordinate system that is used in, for online mapping system. It appears that the people who created this online mapping system, such as Google Map or for Microsoft, that they didn't have any cartographic background at all. Because what they did, they, they just took a sphere and projected that sphere in the simplest way uh, uh, to a plane. And what, what they essentially used, they used so-called spherical mer mercator projection, which has huge distortions and essentially uh, puts cartography like 600 years back. That's when, um, that's when this kind of uh, projection was used. So, uh, so there were even, and this, this projection is so bad that in 1989, seven North American professional geographic organizations adopted a resolution uh, that called for ban on all such rectangular coordinate maps, especially Mercator. Also, the, uh, also in general, the, the group that maintains standardized list of parameters for official georeferenced coordinate systems for quite a bit of time refused to include this because it was considered technically flawed. Eventually, they caved in and decided to call it Popular Visualization Coordinate Reference System and as such included into this list with the EPSG and give it an EPSG code. And here on this illustration, you can see why it is considered so bad. Here you have Greenland and compare the size of Greenland with South America. It's much bigger and it's even bigger than Africa, which is a huge, huge distortion. Here you can see uh, this is a more suitable projection where the relation all the size is much more realistic, much less distorted. So, so this projection indeed uh, provides a very uh, distorted view of the, of the world and it's not recommended for professional work. And this little scheme shows you this is, this is equator. So that's where the distortion is very small, but these areas get really, really distorted. So now where do we find the information about coordinate systems in GIS? So it is when you have metadata file and you always should have metadata file, that's where the information should be stored. 
the, the individual files with the digital data, such as shape files, would have a PRJ file. That's where the information is stored. And also there are EPS, so-called EPSG codes that provide all the basic parameters for um, coordinate systems that are used all over the world. And this, uh, this list has been uh, maintained and provided publicly for free by International Organization of Oil and Gas Producers. And it's available online. And whenever you need a, in, an information for projection, this is the place where to find it. And these EPSG codes are becoming de facto standard uh, for uh, performing pro projection and coordinate system transformations. Then vertical datum is a separate issue and the support uh, is often missing in GIS and you usually need to do it outside GIS to, uh, to convert uh, your data into common vertical datum. So here is an example of the PRJ file for, uh, for ESRI data, such as shape files. So you can see you will have the, the name of the coordinate system then you will have the geoid and datum information. Here is the spheroid. Here is the datum information. So that would be NAD83 that we have already mentioned. And then you have the information about uh, projection and parameters of this projection. And you can see that the same information is uh, also provided in this uh, EPSG specification, and this would be the uh, this would be the form how this information would be provided for the the proj software. So, because we have all all of these data with different coordinate systems, we need to do often coordinate transformations. For example, USGS provides the data in geographic coordinates, so that's the most common that you need to project from geographic coordinates to your local coordinate system. State agencies uh, and local uh, governments use usually state plane coordinate systems. And you also sometimes need conversions between different datums if you are working with some old, old, older data. How are the coordinate system transformations done? You start with your X, Y, it is not a geographic coordinate system. Everything is uh, converted to latitude, longitude, and then from there to the, uh, to the new coordinate system. So, uh, so you can see that this way, all that you need to program for each, uh, each transformation is to have in and out of given coordinate system to geographic coordinate system. So that makes it possible. So from this, we will move on to geospatial data models uh, and specifically to raster.